Okay, hi everyone, my name is Peter, and today we're going to be looking at a thing called pens and ink. These pens are apparently, allegedly, and legendarily made of recycled printer ink and shipped to me all the way from Australia. Practically another planet, as far as I'm concerned. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. And first, let me get into this little pocket over here. We have a little thing, some fan mail here. As you can see here, it says, Dear Peter, I present to you a trilogy of postcards. Pull the bead in the corner to open. Best regards. And there is a tiny bead right up here. I'm not really sure how this works. I hope I'm pulling it this way. Okay. Oh, look at it go. Also take note of this cool stamp right here. That's nice. This is very cool. I'm not entirely sure how this was done. Did I, did I do it? Do I pull more? Oh, this is creative. Dear Peter, I discovered your videos while getting into pens. Actually, I'm more of a crafter, paper, origami, and cat mom. I can see the uh, origami and paper craft in this creation right here. It's very cool. But your soothing voice always keeps me coming back. Also, your... Mm, I don't know what this word right here says. Something... Drawing? Say drawing? Style appears appeals to me. My ink is... Peter... Moss green, maybe? Big Ferris wheel. Just to elaborate on the green feelings your videos evoke. I apologize if I am not reading any of these words right. Because I can relate to your no-nonsense style, I choose the two quizzi quizzical, quizzically cats on the seal. These cats? Is that what this the seal is that what this part of the card is called on the f on the front the cats are from my favorite artist on the moment on the front on the seal of oh, th this oh the seal no oh, this seal i'm so confused i know i'm sorry <laughs> Springtime is glooming well here in Belgium. I think maybe there's some translation issues and I'm probably not helping as much as I could be. I apologize. Hopefully you can enjoy a little spring sun to a mole look your forward for weaved Look forward to a beautiful summer. I'll be thinking about my next carol. Hope you enjoy them. Have a nice day. Chris? Crim 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 Crimway? That was beautiful, and I thank you for it. Even the parts I didn't understand, I am completely convinced that it was kind and encouraging, and I thank you for that. And this was a beautiful three-part fold-in origami arts, pa arts and paper craft card, so thank you very much. That was beautiful. Shout out to you and your art and Belgium and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Sorry if I butchered any of the words that were clear and concise and apparent to everyone else. Now, unlike this ink and paper, which I'm doodling on for a moment, which doesn't work very well together, the tools which Squarespace provides you do work very well together. You can use these tools to host, create, and run a website and even run a business because you can use the tools for inventory management, both for digital or physical products or services that you want to provide. And in my experience, there's just a wonderful level of automation there as far as the inventory management or sending out things like invoices or emails saying that like a package is on the way with a tracking number, stuff like that that just lets you concentrate on the things you want to concentrate on. 
like your art or your business, right? So go check it out, squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website or domain. All right, let's look at these pens from Lousy Ink, as you can see here. A little bit of self-deprecation there. Goes a long way. I think one of these, I think I have a... Okay, let's see what we've got here. Lousy. Does that mean something else in Australia? Here, it means it's bad. I don't know. Oh. That looks nice. Okay. Got this. It says, please recycle our packaging or use it as a pen holder. Lousy. 100% recycled artist ink. 100 milliliters. It's like very crisp, concise uh, bottle right there. Okay. That, is, that does seem like it make a nice pen holder. Let's see if this Precise V7 fits in there. Oh, it fits in there wonderfully. I think these are the fine liners, recycled fine liners. Let's see what's else in here. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna recycle the box straight to the floor for now and then we'll see what further steps there are. Some recycled paper. Hey Peter, thanks a bunch for testing out our products. Hope you can enjoy them. Love your work, keep it lousy, Ollie. This is a very cool piece of paper, by the way. It's like super thick, got like weird chunks missing. That could be a cool hobby to get into, paper making. Got some stickers here. It's not in the middle of my forehead, is it? I'll save two stickers for something more permanent. What is lousy ink? Have you ever wondered what happens to your empty printer cartridges after you've recycled them? The result is our 100% recycled ink. So if you want to pause and read about this process, you can. Be your own printer. I do like that. I do like being my own printer. Learn more at lousyink.com. All right, check it out. I think these are all the same thing, just several boxes. They were very generous. There they are. All sorts of little recycled fibers all over them. Lousy liner. Turning waste into inspiration, it says. We've got the 0.2 millimeter, 0 0.5, 0 0.8. Lousy. Liner. This one feels good. It doesn't feel lousy. Wow, they got in, they they negged themselves, and I I wanted to prove them wrong. Point zero two zero point two millimeters, lousy liner. Yeah, all right. That's the point two. So lousy. Zero point five millimeters. I kind of like that. That's a big, that's a good amount of difference. And then the big gun, 0 0.08. Lousy liner. 0 0.8 millimeters. Look, sometimes like I'm all for eco-friendly recycled stuff, but sometimes people try too hard. Like with that stone paper, they're like, it's eco-friendly. All this, they're, the marketing is there. The good feelings about being nice to the environment are there, but it just doesn't work for what we want it for, right? The paper is stretchy, it's squishy. It doesn't have any of the features that I want from paper for paper to be paper, right? But these... These have all the features I want from pens for pens to be pens. So why not have them be recycled? 
I guess the only downside is if the price matches and if it's affordable for everybody. So I guess go to their website and decide for yourself for that part. All right, what I'm gonna do for this ink, I'm not sure the best way to try it. There's a big dripper dropper in there. A big old dripper dropper. What I was thinking I could do is um, I have a nib holder here and I never closed this shoulder pocket. I ordered this jacket on Etsy, by the way. It said it was handmade. I don't know if that's true. It could just be they have, whoever's selling them to me has sources that I don't. I like it though. It's so over the top, crazy tech jacket type thing. I have a bunch of nibs here. I'll put a nib in the nib holder, like so. And then maybe, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this will fit in this bottle is the problem. I don't know if they intend, where am I supposed to drip this dropper? I guess they want me to drip drop it into another pen. But this, the, the mouth of this bottle is very narrow. And I don't have anywhere to put this down. I'm gonna put it down onto onto this recycled fine liner cardboard box right there. And see if I can get a dip in there. Not an ideal way to dip, but it might work. Lousy ink. This is making me want to draw with the dip pen some more. I might just have to pour out some of the ink into a more friend, a, a more dip friendly bottle. There we go. That's getting some good scribbles. Oh, this nib is so sharp and crisp and satisfying. This way, this time it's lasting a lot longer, the ink in there. Look at it go. I think probably it would last forever. It's inexhaustible. All right, maybe in another video I'll come back to the this dip pen for now. I also haven't drawn with fine liners in a long time. So I'm gonna go to those, which I think I've already used for the sponsored segment which I'll have edited in by now. No, actually, I think I have used the dip pen for the sponsored segment. Yes, yes, I think I will have had, which is in the video has happened, happened previously, but now hasn't happened yet in my timeline. In your timeline, it has, it's weird. It's very weird. Also great, the the lousy ink colors, they really match my style right now. Like, I mean, look at this, You're like, nice. I gotta admit that as I was going back and editing the intro, I did laugh at myself a little as I was watching myself trying to read that postcard, the, the trifold postcard that I got. Like so many of those words I was stumbling over, I could suddenly easily make out. Like, Peter, how can you not read this? There were some little problems like with the, the person, per, the person's handwriting, like the, when they wrote a D, like the little circle part wasn't collect, connected to the, the vertical line. So I think that was throwing me off a little bit, but I was just laughing at myself for not being able to make out the words. I don't know why I couldn't make them out when I was reading it in front of me, but I could make it out on the computer screen, looking at it later. Anyways, thank you for that uh, postcard, and sorry I couldn't read it very well in the moment. Also, I will say I've been watching this show called MasterChef Junior. I've watched a lot of the normal MasterChef, and I started watching MasterChef Junior because I watched all of this other show by Gordon Ramsay called Hotel Hell, and... That was just the next thing that came up. I don't think I normally would have watched it otherwise because like, yeah, it's got kids, it's probably worse. But Master Chef Junior is way better. 
Look, Master Chef is kind of for those of you that don't know. I've I've talked about it before. It's like it's a two part show. It's for in one sense about the people, right, the contestants and the drama between them, and in the other sense, it's about the cooking and the can they make the dishes and how the dishes turn out. And both of these are interesting, but when it comes to Master Chef Junior, the people in that show are far more interesting. Than the people in the normal Master Chef, there's something about these kids. I think they're like eight to thirteen year olds, where th- they haven't learned how to hide and disguise all their emotions yet. Like we've, I don't know, like society like hammers it out of you. You know, to like have a stone face all the time. Don't show if you're if you dislike something or like something. Don't show if you're excited. Just always have like a neutral outlook on your face. These kids, you can just read everything on their face, and their the the gamut of their reactions, the the roller coaster that they go on, is just so much crazier. Like they they jump and scream and yell, and they burst into tears way more often, and it's just so much more interesting. So the part of uh, the contestants, the people, is more interesting and entertaining to watch. But all, when it comes to the cooking. It, as far as I can tell, it seems like these kids can cook just as good as the adults. So, when it comes to it, the show is just as good, if not way better. So, I've only watched almost one season of it, but I like it so far. When it comes to cooking, I personally am trying to get into cooking a little more, obviously. There's only upsides. I mean, I've tried to give myself excuses and talk myself out of cooking for years now like oh I don't have time it makes my kitchen dirty it's a lot of energy there's just I mean a good maybe one good excuse is that there's just one of me I mean it does feel way better to cook if you can share it with somebody I mean most recipes that you look up it says serves two serves four right but I mean I guess that's just when you half the ingredients or just um you know save some of it for the next day or just eat twice as much as you should. Anyways, that's not a, there aren't a lot of really good excuses, except maybe time if you're really busy. But we make we make time for the things we really want. And I I think it would be nice to get into cooking. My my main problem with it, I think, is I've had the wrong mindset around it, which is the problem I have with a lot of things in life that I haven't been able to get into. Like previously, I was talking about writing in a previous video, which I think my main problem there was a mindset thing. But here I, I was looking at it like like it was a chore, like I was doing it just to fill my belly, but I think I can look at it as an actual pleasurable activity, right? Something that's fun to do. But anyway, so I've I've I know look, I'm gonna say I'm gonna talk about cookbooks, physical cookbooks. I know look, I know there are a billion recipes online and I can they're free easily accessible but still I just I just like having cookbooks so I bought some cookbooks um, I bought I bought the fa- there's a famous one called salt fat acid heat right that's a nice one but it's a little overwhelming because it I haven't looked at it much it has nice illustrations to be honest I like photographs when it comes to cooking but it has nice illustrations and it's like these are like the basic building blocks of cooking in it or Every cooking book, every cookbook these days is like the basics. We're bringing it back to the basics. We're going to make it simple. But this salt, fat, acid, heat book is about 500 pages long. So it's overwhelming in that sense. And then, so then I have this other one called, uh, I got two others. Um, Jamie Oliver's Five Ingredients and Oh Cook by James May. And these are both good. I like them. They are pretty simple. Like, uh, not a lot of ingredients. It's just, uh, like, obviously, J- the Jamie Oliver one, five ingredients for each one. Even though sometimes there are more than five. Because they're like, anyways, I don't want to explain it. But also, I ordered, I did order a Gordon Ramsay one. Because I'm a little bit of a Gordon Ramsay fanboy. I won't, I won't lie about it. But look, here's the other main problem I've been running into. I don't own much cooking stuff. This is another kind of fake excuse because I know there's about a billion people out there who cook multiple delicious, incredible, healthy, life-sustaining meals every day with like one pot and one spoon, right? 
So I know it's possible, but I bought a bunch of stuff on Amazon and it's been coming in the past few days. Pots, pans, baking trays, sheets, knives, spoons, you know, stuff like that. It adds up fast. I, I, and like in James May's book, he has like the essential kit. And then he has like the nice to have list as far as cooking stuff like pots and pans and cooking buckets. Anyways, I, I only made sure I had like the nice to have stuff. And uh, I mean the, the essentials, right? I made sure I had the essentials. And maybe sometimes I splurged a little bit buying like a like like a like a fifty dollar pot when I could have bought a twenty dollar pot because I'm like it might as well get a nice one if I'm serious about this, which I don't really know if I am because I haven't actually. Anyways, it's my fault that I added added up to like five hundred dollars worth of pots and pans. So I thought surely now I'm gonna be able to cook anything in these book books. But even now I look, they're like the. The cookbooks that advertise themselves as boiling everything down to the essentials. Like, these are supposed to be the easiest recipes besides, like, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or, you know, tomato soup. I open it up. I find one. Five recipes. Or something simple by James May. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. I'm prepared. I'm, I'm going to read through this. And then I'm going to go to the grocery store, get the ingredients, come back, whip it up. And I'll have like, I ticked off a thing that I like. I know how to cook that, and then I can do it again later if I like it. But then they'll just casually say like, "Turn the broiler to medium." I didn't buy a broiler. I don't. Have, does everyone have a broiler? Or they'll be like, "Throw the bread in the food processor." Do we all have food processors? Maybe that wasn't on the essentials list. Anyways, I ordered a food processor. I haven't bought a broiler yet. Is that just like, what is that? Anyway, so I'm just saying, I'm endlessly finding new excuses. But eventually, I'll have enough cookbooks where surely, I'll, I'll, as I gradually accumulate more cookbooks and more kitchen stuff, eventually I'll find one recipe. Surely, one day I'll find one recipe recipe where there is a matchup of kitchen tools required and kitchen tools that I have and I will make something just kidding I think it's very possible I think I, I think uh, I'm blowing it out of proportion is what I'm saying it's gonna be okay don't worry all right thanks for watching everyone Take it easy. Uh, also, watching those kids in MasterChef, it's just, it, it makes me, they say the craziest, they say much crazier things than the regular contestants, the adults. Like, it even made me feel like I can feel my own brain becoming less plastic or less elastic or whatever. Like, they ask all the kids, um, what are you going to do if you win the $100,000? And one of them said, I'm going to take me and my brothers to a theme, to a theme park or something. I'm like, you only need like a hundred dollars for that. I think maybe 200. And one of them, Jack, he said he was scared. He said, I was so scared. I could feel my heart beating in my chest so hard. Please don't break ribs. It's just, they say some amazing things that the normal contestants don't say. I like it. It's much more inspiring and uplifting. They just, they feel like, they feel, they feel more alive somehow. Anyways, all right, goodbye everyone.